Hi, my name is Phil Gardner and welcome to Fun With Boxes, where today I'm taking a look at a Western flip and write board game designed by Matthew Dunstan and Jeffrey D. Allers and published by Dranda Games. In Pioneer Rails, you will be expanding your railroad across the Old West. And to do this, you'll be using multi-purpose poker cards that will allow you to determine from which station you can start your tracks from. And of course, will be used to form a poker hand at the end of each of the game's four rounds. What perhaps you may be thinking is a flip and write board game. Well, they work pretty much the same as roll and write board games. But now perhaps you're thinking, what's a roll and write board game when it's at home? And what's all this flipping about? Well, both games work the same way really. With a roll and write, you are rolling dice and then using those dice to draw or write things onto a game board or rather a game sheet in this case. In the case of this game, you are instead flipping over cards and then using these cards instead of dice to draw or write onto your game sheet. Let's first take a fun with boxes look at what you get with the Kickstarter version or also called the Essential Edition version of this game. And then I can explain what all this flipping and writing malarkey is all about. In Pioneer Rails, you are a railroad owner competing against other owners to find the best way to connect establishments to the railroad and satisfy the demands of the locals in the Old West. And to do this, you will be flipping and writing to literally draw your roots onto the map of the land, all the while building up the best poker hand you can. Setting up the game is really, really straightforward. First, here is the map sheet each player will be using, which is double-sided, and all players must agree which side to use to play the game on. There is an additional map pad included in the Essential Edition, offering players two or more maps to try out, along with some new features and goal cards, along with two mini expansions. But I will go over how to play the main game, and then go over the additional content later. Next, we grab the goal cards and separate them into three small decks based on the symbol on the front of the cards. Shuffle each deck and then deal out one card from each deck and place them face up in front of all the players, returning the rest to the box. These three cards will have in-game scoring objectives for all the players. Then take all the playing cards, shuffle them and place them face down onto the table. Finally, choose a player to be the dealer. They will take the deck of cards along with a dealer token and we are ready to play. Gameplay. The game flows in this way. There are four rounds and each round consists of five turns. At the start of each turn, the dealer reveals three playing cards from the deck face up onto the table. The dealer then chooses one of these three cards to use by taking it and place it in front of them. None of the other players can use this card. Instead, the rest of the players can use one of the two cards left on the table. They do not take the cards, they just choose one, leaving it where it is. This way players can choose to take the same card. Then simultaneously, all players add their chosen card to their poker hand and then extend their railway. Once all players have done this, we check to see if anyone has completed a goal card. If they have and are the first to do so, they circle the 10 point star. And if more than one player also completed it on this turn, they will get to circle the 10 point star too. However, anyone who has not completed it this turn will have to cross off the 10 point star and will be able to circle the 5 point star on a later round if they complete it. As a final part of the round, discard the three playing cards that were used and then pass the dealer token to the next player clockwise, who now becomes the dealer for the next turn. The first round will end once five turns have been completed, but let's take a look at how you build your poker hand and lay down your rail tracks. Adding a card to your poker hand, this is straightforward. You simply write down the card you have taken into the leftmost space at the bottom of your sheet. The fact it's a diamond is irrelevant for the poker hand. 
The suit of the card is only used for extending your railway. At the end of the round, you will have taken five cards and written them in here. Then, you will score points based on your poker hand for that round. A pair scores you one point, two pairs, two points, three of a kind, three points, a full house, four points, a straight, five points, and a four of a kind, six points. And the second thing you do with your chosen card is to extend your railway. And this is the main part of the game. The suit of the card that you chose determines which railway you can extend, which you do so by drawing three tracks along the edges of hexes. Each track must extend from the station, the white hex with the suits icon, or from the end of tracks connecting back to that station. And each station can have up to six lines extending from it. And you can choose to extend any of the lines so long as they track back to the station. Here is an example from the rule book. We chose the Queen of Diamonds, so we can start our ray lines from the diamond hex. We first drew line one, then carried on extending that line by drawing line two. And we could continue to extend that line, but instead decide to start another line from the diamond and drew line three. It's important to note that the railway line always terminates at a town and cannot continue through it. And two railway lines may never meet, except at a town. And up to three different railways can connect with each other at the same town. This is called a network. Finally, after drawing your three lines, you can check to see if any features are activated. And there are several possible features, so let's take a look at them now. The first feature we will look at are the saloons. You will notice that there are several features like the saloon that have a number in a circle on the hex. This is the number of lines drawn along the edges required to activate the feature. So, for the saloon, you need to have drawn two lines along its edge, and its ability will allow you to circle the next usable saloon symbol where you mark your poker hands. You can only circle the saloon symbols of the current or future rounds, not previous rounds. And this will allow you to double the points for your poker hand for that round if the saloon is circled. Next we have forts. If you have drawn four lines along the edges of a fort hex, you can circle the leftmost available fort symbol on your sheet. This will allow you to score the rightmost circle points for the forts. Mines or gold nuggets. If you have just one line drawn along the edge, you can circle a gold nugget on your sheet. This will score you one point for each circle gold nugget at the end of the game, even if you have crossed any of these off. Banks. If you have drawn three lines along the bank edges, you can cross off up to four circled golden nuggets. Then multiply the number of nuggets you crossed off by the first available multiplier and write down the result in the box. As in the example here, three nuggets were crossed off and the first box is times two. So we write in six here and we'll score these points at the end of the game. Rail yards. If you have drawn three lines along the rail yard edge, you can circle off the leftmost available rail yard. At the end of the game, score the highest number of towns connected to a single railway line or network multiplied by the multiplier shown on the rightmost circled rail yard symbol. Looking at the example in the rule book, two towns are connected to hearts and two to clubs. As one of the towns is connected to both hearts and club stations, their network is combined. So they have three towns connected and will score that times four at the end of the game for 12 points. Towns. Towns work a little differently in that you are terminating your rail line at a town. And if this is the first time that town has been reached, you circle the leftmost town symbol on your sheet. And at the end of the game, they are worth one point each. But you can cross off a circle town at any time to activate one of the five special benefits during the game. Bridge. You can draw a bridge track across the river. Tunnel. You can draw a track between the two hexes of a mountain range. Shortcut. You can draw a track connecting opposite sides of a blank land hex. Switch. You can draw a track branching off a line to start a new line. And this is the only way to achieve a fork in the railway line. And finally, suit. You can change the suit of your current card to build all of your tracks on a different railway. 
And the final feature, and the one that I found a little confusing at first in the game, is the cattle ranch. In order to complete a cattle ranch, you must separate it from all other cattle ranches on the map. And you do this by creating a boundary using tracks, the river, mountains, stations, or the edge of the map. If you do this, you circle the leftmost cattle ranch and this will score you points at the end of the game equal to the rightmost circled cattle ranch. Here is the example from the rule book, and you will see the cattle ranch here is cut off from the rest of the map by the mountains here, the rail lines and the station here and the gold mine and the edges of the map. This is a straightforward example, but as there are a lot of features on the board, it can get difficult to see and you may block one off without realising it. So on your first few games, it's a good idea to keep checking and be very much aware of where the cattle ranches are and how you could close them off as you lay your railroads. After you've played through the five turns of the fourth and final round, you score points for your features. Mines or gold nuggets, they score you one point for each circled, even if crossed off. Bank, score points equal to the sum of all the banks. Forts, score the points for the rightmost circle fort. Cattle ranches, score the points for the rightmost circle cattle ranch. Rail yard, score the highest number of towns connected to a single railway line or network multiplied by the multiplier shown on the rightmost circle rail yard symbol. Towns score one point for each circled, even if crossed off. You also score points for completed goals and the sum total of all your poker hands. And the player with the highest score wins. Or, in a tie, the player with the most points from poker hands. Or, if still tied, it's a shared victory. So, as you can see, this is a quite involved flip and right with a lot of things to do and a lot of things to think about as you plan your railway line to victory. The game comes with an advanced hand card rule for one to three players, a five plus player variant and full solo mode. Plus the essential edition provides you with alternative maps that feature bandits and jails and forest gold cards, along with two mini expansions. The first of which is the company owners expansion, where you have random company holders each round that changed the basic rules of the game and the Joker cards mini expansion that allows you to use a Joker as any value of poker card when scoring your poker hand and also each Joker card can be used as one of two suits. There's the Spades Clubs Joker and the Hearts Diamonds Joker. All in all you get a ton of replayability with this game and each set of maps comes on an 80 sheet double sided pad so you have a ton of maps to use and oh the game comes with pencils as you would hope not all games like this do come with pencils so this is good to know but also hurrah a rubber or eraser as some people say is included too yay now not many of these games do come with an eraser and I think you may find it will be very useful as you plan your rail routes. I know I certainly needed to use it on a few occasions. This is a great, if a little more complex, flip and write and I would really highly recommend it. Well, thanks for watching and please take care. Bye for now.